it was a big learning experience for me to watch Jim Gordon record Your So Vain. Carly brought us to England to do the second record. Mm. And it was with a big time, very successful producer who had made lots of hit records named Richard Perry. Sure, yeah. And um, it was very different vibe than the previous record, which was Cat Stevens producer, Paul Samuel Smith. One was a very intimate small band record, No Secrets, was a big production. Anyhow, we went through all the songs, the band, when we got to London in 72, <clears throat> and we were suitable on maybe five or six of them. But Richard Perry had very specific ideas and said, okay, well, it, it works with Andy on these songs, but I'm bringing in Jim Gordon to do these songs. And one of them is Your So Vain. So whatever it was I was doing when we were working on Your So Vain, it was not happening for Richard Perry. And I got, Gordon came in, I had really admired him a lot. I knew about his work. Mm. And I, I went to the studio and just said, hey, Jim, I, I'm Carly's road drummer. Do you mind if I sit in the drum booth and watch you play? And he was like, hey, it's cool. By the way, we share the same birthday, July 14, but he's five years older than me. So I got to sit in the drum booth and watch Jim Gordon uh, come up with the drum part for You're So Vain. And that, in th three or four hours, I learned more than I think I've learned in my entire 22 years of my life. I learned more watching Jim Gordon come up with that drum part and just to see him physically doing it, not yeah. just hearing it, but when you see a drummer doing it, there's an added thing to it. You, you, you see the body language and, and, it, and it all kind of makes more sense. So that was mind blowing what I learned from Jim that day. Cause that you're so vain groove kind of dum, 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 you're so vain, Check, dum, dum, that boom, 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 that kind of California laid back, boom, 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 yeah. boom. I wasn't cool with that. That was like very West Coast, relaxed Californian. I was into a much more funky, funky head. Yeah. And, and being able to make that beat, dum, boom, boom, really sit down. I couldn't do, I was not capable of that. The moment I was watching Jim Gordon, I knew it. It was kind of just out of my vocabulary and he owned it and made it feel so good. And I really understood watching him, man, it's about conviction and yeah. owning every note that you play. I, I really got it loud and clear that Jim knows exactly what he's going to do every bar, exactly what he's going to play. He can do it over and over for 30 takes. If Richard Perry gives him instruction, he has the brain to alter it and remember it and incorporate it. But the conviction behind every note on the hat and the snare, the grace note, it, there was nothing, there were no throwaway notes. There was no spontaneity. It was, he was programmed like a drum machine mm. to deliver that drum part. And it is a brilliant drum part if you sit down and listen to it. It's got three or four different gears. It's got the cross stick. Uh, anyhow, I really understood when I saw Jim, what is involved in making what for me is good music. Mm -hmm. I really got it from Jim Gordon big time about what I had to do to move, clean my act up and, and, and move out of my funky New York head and all my little busy funky things away from all that fresh stuff. I had to learn to leave all that behind and go learn how to cool that shit out 
and 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 play simple and make it really sit down but at least i knew that i knew i had to yeah. learn how to do that and jim gordon was like the, that was the day the door opened wow <clears throat> did you spend much time did you interact a lot with him during that time did you guys no i saw no. him i said goodbye to him that day he was in traffic then yeah derek derek and the dominoes that was over i think he was in traffic anyhow he was in london with some act richard perry got him into the studio but um no i only saw jim one more time maybe a year later in california i called him and said hey remember me and he said hey man got some people up at my house tonight come on here's the address come up to my house i went up to his house there were people there and hanging and i saw him again and he's a very mellow cat relaxed yeah. mellow guy huge tall big gut you know like six foot three or four a really big man yeah. but a gentle giant and i hung and never saw him again